Hi friend, I'm Sarita and this is Missionary Life. I'm here to help you live your dream life on and off the mission field. I'm an author, life coach, former missionary, compassion fatigue and grief expert and working mom. I want to encourage you to design a life of purpose, authenticity, ease and meaning where you're no longer surviving but thriving. I'm here to help you, the helpers, become emotionally, spiritually and physically healthy. I'll interview experts in mental health and missionaries to offer you practical tools to help you heal from trauma, burnout, grief and PTSD. I know that life often doesn't work out the way we long for. I'm here to create a safe space to navigate those disappointments and transitions with abundance so you can live your mission. My new book, Healing Her, a memoir will be released in June 2024, and I can't wait for you to get it into your hands. Thank you for being here. All right, hi, and welcome back to another episode of Missionary Life. I'm Sarita Hartz, your host, and I'm here today with Shauna Ingram. And today we're going to be talking about re-entry and leaving well. And so we're going to be talking about a trauma-informed approach to re-entry and going through that experience, as I know that um, so many missionaries go through the difficult process of re-entry, myself included. It was a, a rocky re-entry for me, and so we really need resources and tools to help guide us through that process. And so I'm so excited to have Shauna here with me today. Hi, Shauna. Hi. It's good to be here. Yeah, I have loved your your writing and all of your stuff on re-entry. And so can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So I've been a part of Missions World for about 15 years, both on and off uh, the field. We were in East Africa in Tanzania for five years and came back about 10 years ago and um, have worked in missionary care, yeah, the whole time. So yeah. seen the whole missions re- uh, cycle, the whole cycle. Yes, there. for sure. And you have um, a website and you do um, work with, with missionaries who are returning. And I think you have a, like a book out as well. Yeah, yeah, I've got actually a couple of workbooks. We do groups. Um, I have a, a new book coming out about uh, what the church needs to know about trauma. Um, so awesome. About that. Yes, <laughs> so important. The church needs to know more, know more about trauma. I totally agree. Uh, so I thought I'd start out with a, a quote that I've actually written in um, one of my books about what it felt like for me going through reentry. And so I said, transition felt like navigating the world underwater. My ears full of pressure, sounds muted and movement slowed. The landscape was blurred and shifting like coral, drifting and wafting with the tides. The world felt dampened somehow and at the same time acute. Acute because of all the survival instincts and trauma brain were firing with new environments and fresh dangers. It was strange to feel both deadened and like my skin was prickling with electricity at the same time. So I wrote that about transition. I know that when we go through transition, it can be so disorienting. And I'd like to just hear some of your personal story of transition and reentry. I know you must have a story that that brought you into this work, and so I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about like if I wrote a book about my life in missions right after we came back, you know, it would sort of be the one, the one that, okay, we understand God and, you know, just do what he says and everything will be well. Yeah. And then I went through the reentry season. Yes. (laughs) And, um, you know, we came back, we felt like we came back well. We, it was sort of planned. We had finished um, some projects that we had been working on. Um, We felt like our job was to make sure that the the new people on the field were doing well. Um, We felt like we had done that well. Um, And then we came back and thought we were going to stay with both of us were going to stay with our organization. Mm -hmm. Um, However, our some of our churches and people decided that they, well, you're back in America now, so you don't need support. Uh, (laughs) So uh, that was a really stressful time, which led to a time of being uh, physically ill. We had four children that were in school and they were going to school and they were coming back saying, we're not American. 
Yeah. So <laughs> and hard. yeah, so it was just, you know, it was just really one thing on top of another on top of another. And I just, I didn't have time to process. I hadn't really been able to process what happened on the field. And I was just sort of in this, like, there's something happening, but I don't know what it is. Yeah. And so I felt like, well, what, you know, what does that mean? And then, I, you know, I went to counselor. Oh, you're just in reentry. I, mm. like, oh. I felt like it was something a little bit more, but I didn't really know. Again, I didn't really have words. I didn't really have vocabulary to um, have a, a space to really be able to process that. Yeah. So um, I was, uh, I was actually being on the missionary care team my uh, supervisor said, hey, there's this trauma uh, training that would be really good for everybody. And I said, well, that's great because our missionaries have trauma on the field. Yes. <laughs> You're like, it's also learn. me. <laughs> <laughs> but as I was working through that, I realized, oh, wait a minute. That's me. <laughs> yeah. What I'm going through, I'm sort of stuck in this season of what we call sort of a season of no hope, of not knowing yeah. how to move forward. Yeah. Um, so that led me to um, realize that there was a next step, you know, really what the next step was in all of that. And then it was actually involved in with Whitcliffe in the career development department mm -hmm. and realized that was really the next step. And so sort of created a program around that. So I started with this idea of when people would come to career development, it's like, oh, you know what? You really need to go work on your trauma first. Yeah. Uh, and then and then when people would work through this uh, program, six weeks or six years. <laughs> yeah. Was, um, we noticed that they were uh, in a space of, well, what's next? And I didn't really have that with the program that I was currently working with. Mm -hmm. um, created sort of a three-step of let's work on your trauma first, then we can mm -hmm. see who we are, a self-development uh, piece, who we are, a new, a new re renewed hope uh, purpose, mm -hmm. um, and then sort of do coaching and look at the idea of a new mindset. And mm -hmm. so we've uh, created that and been piloting that for the last few years. I love that. It's so beautiful how you took this experience that you went through and then were able to parlay that into helping other people. And so was there anything during that time for you personally, a reentry that, that practically, you know, helped you? Was it the counseling? Was it processing your trauma? Was it reframing your experience? Like what were the things that helped you get through that, that rocky reentry period? Yeah. Um, well, there was actually a blog called Rocky Reentry. That was really <laughs> Yes, <laughs> uh, I read it. Uh, um, that gave me, again, just the vocabulary of like, oh, okay, this isn't, this is something. And I think that that idea of like, oh, this is really hard, mm. um, allowed me to, to have, have that space to really with God, because a lot of it was wrestling with the Lord, because it's like, we thought we were coming back to do this thing for you. And yeah. this is what we get. Yeah. Um, um, so being allowed, allowed to grieve. Yeah. So this is just the validation, right? Of just when you read someone else or hear someone else talk about reentry and you're like, oh, wow. Like, this is actually really hard and I'm allowed to grieve this and I'm allowed to process this because this isn't a normal experience for, for the average person, you know, going to a, a country, leaving a country, having to leave relationships behind and ministry behind a sense of identity and purpose behind. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just sometimes that validation is so crucial to the healing process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that was probably my my biggest takeaway from that season. Um, wow. And just that we need to provide. I mean, there are great programs, like one week debriefing. Right. But it was, you know, the two years after when I was still really struggling, trying to figure out, well, what do I 
do now and what does that look like? So it, it was sort of the, the, okay, that's great. So looking at it, that there's different layers mm-hmm. upon layers. And then I would sort of deal with this thing and then something else <laughs> deeper would happen. Yeah. Um, and connect, um, being able to connect with that, you know, and that it's really a lifestyle. Mm. It's a lifestyle of, of learning how to put some new tools in place um, and ha- having an opportunity to go back into those tools and spend a time in grieving and spending a time in lament, spending yeah. time in forgiveness. Um, one of the biggest thing we, we realized was we learned uh, through this process was forgiving ourselves a lot yeah. of just that we believe expectations that put put on us the the book uh, expectations and burnout yeah uh, was a really big part of my um, well on the field and then coming back of learning how to figure out what what that's going to look like yeah I I totally agree I think the expectations we put on ourselves especially as missionaries in, in ministry are so high, you know, even if we're running a nonprofit or whatever it might be, we feel like, you know, we need to be successful and succeed at our mission. And yet sometimes it's so nebulous, right? Like, what does that look like? Oh, well, mm-hmm. I loved people or people got saved or I built this program, you know, but then when you're leaving and you, you know, maybe you're worried, you're not sure how everything is going to continue on without you, or, you know, there's just this feeling mm-hmm. of, gosh, like I had these high expectations of myself, but I'm not sure if I even met them. You know, I don't know where, if I get the A plus, you know, on on this whole thing or not. And that was really, yeah, that was really difficult for me too. I was so hard on myself, you know, and just going into therapy and realizing like, wow, like I needed to, like you said, forgive myself and let go of some of these high expectations I did have that I needed to have a certain Um, it needed to look a certain way, you know, when I, when I left. And so, yeah, I really uh, love um, this, this quote that I I found of yours. It says us cross-cultural workers, we aren't unique. We are human and our worldview may be its own kind, but our humanity is a shared experience with everyone we meet. And we are not immune to the effects of trauma, both big and little kinds or impervious to suffering and sacrifice. They shape us, they haunt us and they paint a picture of our world. And that was so well put. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about, you know, you, because you have this trauma informed approach, what kinds of trauma and, and PTSD among missionaries are you seeing, you know, from what they experience on the field? Uh, yeah. Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long list. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, the first thing we need to do is sort of reframe this word, what trauma is. And um, I like using uh, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services under their Substance Abuse and Mental Health uh, Administration. And they say trauma results from an event, a series of events, um, or a set of circumstances that is experienced by an individual as physically or emotionally harmful or threatening and that has lasting adverse effects on an individual's functioning of individuals, physical, um, social, emotional, and spiritual well-being. It's a long one, but I think it covers covers everything that, um, I I have a social work background. So, you know, I studied trauma as, you know, as much as I could in, you know, college, 30 years ago. Right. And it was, you know, this one big bad event that happens to us. Right. And, um, and it's not, it, it's not the event itself. Um, and I think bringing words into that, 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 that it's really the long lasting effects of it. So two people can go through the same event, yeah. but one might be traumatized and one may not. And so that's really hard when we're, especially people that are working with missions is like, is this person across from me in trauma or not? And what does that mean? And what does that mean for me as the debriefer, you know, or coach, uh, what does that look like? So I think that's a really important um, uh, 
place to, to start with yeah. what you know trauma is um, because yeah. there is the the acute the one-time event right. however what i see is not just that one-time event it's sort of this compound yeah event that we hadn't been able to to process every piece of what happened to us mm -hmm. and so that that's where i ended up realizing oh i'm in trauma like like my body was doing stuff that i didn't know yeah what it was doing and i mean from from physical things and i couldn't control it because as much as i love to be in control of things like yeah. i couldn't control it. So there's, so there's that piece of it. Of, so if there's a, a big event, that's actually really easy to say, oh, that was a traumatic event. Um, yeah. But that compound, on, you know, one thing on top of each other, on top of each other. Um, yeah, I love, um, I don't know if you've read Andy Klober's book, uh, Try Softer, but she talks about the little T traumas. And I, I really like that distinction because I think so many of us, we don't, define the things that happen to us as trauma. And so we just move on, you know, so maybe, you know, for me, some of them might have been, oh, um, witnessing the death of, of a baby or, um, you know, grieving a, someone who died in our community or um, losing the support of a, you know, a supporter or a board member, someone that I trusted, you know, being betrayed by volunteers or, um, you know, so it's, it's sometimes, not yeah. just, you know, maybe being stolen from or maybe witnessing corruption in, in your country, you know, and so it's not always like, okay, I was sexually assaulted, you know, on the field or, you know, sometimes, which that does happen, sadly, but there is a lot of the little T traumas that, that kind of build up. And so what are some of the ones you've seen in, in your work? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so ones that you've noticed a lot of the secondary trauma uh, yeah. is really we we see we witness things that happen around us that that really don't make sense and we can yeah. add that on um so, uh, one big one that a lot of people don't know about is called moral injury mm. that's a new one that's coming up um from a space yeah. with working with veterans mm -hmm. of sort of going against your morals yeah. uh going the, your values, your belief systems mm. uh, that you're required to, or even if you're seeing that happen. So that could be, you know, I have to bribe a police officer. Right. Uh, things done. You know, is that right? Is that right. not right? Should we do that? To, yeah. you know, watching something really, really bad <laughs> happen to someone else. Yeah. And that we could it. And right. so I think that that's a really big one that that we need to start talking about yeah. um, is, is that place of moral entry. So yes. in our re-entry groups, we hear that one a lot. It's like, yeah. oh, I didn't realize that was a a, a place of trauma that, yeah. you know, something that I, that I witnessed. There's also um, survivor's guilt, especially during COVID when yeah. missionaries have to leave um, unexpectedly, and then they were, you know, they were leaving their their friends behind. Yeah, and they they were going to come back. We don't, you know, we don't. You know, are we leaving them in a really bad yeah. <laughs> place? Bye. I mean, um, and so that's been definitely. I think that's a really one. important one that you mentioned because, especially with COVID, I wanted to talk about that a little bit too because. With COVID, we did see so much reentry happening. And a lot of it was, like you said, forced and unplanned and unexpected. And I feel like that just added to the grief because I know even when I left, even though it was planned, it, I also kind of felt forced into it because a lot of it had to do with my my health issues and the fact that we couldn't have a baby, we couldn't have a baby there because of the different um infertility stuff that I had gone through on the field. And so I did still feel forced into it, but I feel so 
Uh, I have so much empathy for all the missionaries who've had to leave due to COVID. And there is that survival's guilt of feeling like, oh man, like I'm having to leave these people behind and I hope they're going to be okay. And, you know, maybe they're in a bad situation and I'm, I'm getting out of here, right? I'm pulling the report. And it just feels like a terrible guilt inducing feeling, you know, to have to leave these people that you've loved and, and poured your life into. Yeah. Another one um, is just undealt childhood trauma, right? That, yeah. that um, we haven't been able to, we think, oh, we, you know, sometimes we get this emotional response at 12 or 13 and we, you know, feel like God's leading us to, but we haven't dealt with those, yeah, those traumas, um, you know, attachment issues yeah. uh, before you leave. And then, of course, when you get to the field, it just sort of all explodes. Yeah, the mission, <laughs> the mission field has a way of, of bringing all our trauma to the surface, for sure. Right. right. So <laughs> I feel like reentry is its own kind of trauma. Can you talk about how reentry is its own kind of trauma for, for people that are that are having to leave? Yeah, I th- I think what I've seen is we expectation of what we think it's going to be like when we come back. So there's, again, there's multi levels of layers. So why did you come back? Right. So I think that's a big area because sometimes the reason we come back again, you mentioned infertility, um, we see a lot of reasons people come back is, you know, maybe a health issue, either yeah. themselves, their children, even their parents, where they had to come back and, and sort of do a, a caregiver role. Yeah, um, I see that a lot. Yeah, I think a, a divorce or, mm-hmm. you know, a death, you know, so some of those um, spaces, working with a lot of divorced women mm-hmm. currently, um, of like, so it isn't just that re-entry, it's, right. it's this, you know, a, a, another layer. It's like, okay, well, let's, we might have to work on that first before we can even look at a re-entry space, right. um, that relationship, which of course affects our identity, mm-hmm. uh, and our relationships. Yeah. And so those are sort of those bigger, bigger traumas that we're we're seeing in the reentry yeah. space. I think I've seen a lot of, um, like you were talking about, marital issues, uh, children, you know, needing different schooling or children needing therapy, and then another big one is is burnout. You know, that was a big part of my experience as well. So the burnout actually causes a lot of the physical health issues. You know, so right. not being able to actually, you know, survive over there the way that you are because you're so burned out. And so I see that a lot. I want to get really practical for a second. And can you uh, recommend, you know, are there ways you feel like can ease this transition where where missionaries can prepare for a wanted or unwanted departure so that it's not as traumatizing for them? Um, I think the first thing is just talking about that it's going to be hard. Yeah. You know, we prepare people to go overseas, um, but we we don't prepare them to come back. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit about my, my mission of like, let's, let's start talking about this and talking about how hard it is talking with our organizations to say like, do you have a plan for when people come back? Right. Just drop them. Right. (laughs) Which Um, we see a lot of. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So maybe there's a better way to do that. Uh, So this idea of leaving well, um, So there's always this idea of like, okay, let, let, and there's a lot of books written on this. Like, well, how do you leave well? Um, how do we put um, what, and of course that looks different for different people. So right. there's the, the like making sure you take your, your work and pass it on to either another missionary, mm. you know, to a national, if, if that's possible. Yeah. What does that look like? celebrate, you know, celebrating mm-hmm. the things that you've done well, um, leaving, leaving in a good place. Again, that's what we did. Yeah. You know, we felt like we, did. <laughs> we so, checked the boxes. Come on. <laughs> we, we built our rafts. We, we did everything, um, that we were supposed to do and that we came back. 
So, so I call that, uh, so we call it three seasons of reentry. So the first one is, is sort of that, that space of, uh, okay, we're going to come back. We need, we need food. We need, we need bed, like we needed beds for everybody. Yeah. Uh, we needed a house, you know, we needed those practical things. So, you know, sort of having a check checklist, we, we have that, um, with our, our stuff. So it's sort of that, that first space of, of, you know, do we have everything that we need? Uh, do we know where, where we're going to come back? You know, are we coming back, uh, to a play like a lot, we have a lot of people in reentry in Dallas area because we're SI, there's the SIL and then there's uh, PBT. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of, you know, just reentry, you know, spaces yeah. because people are working with the org, they're still continuing to work with the organization. Um, like that's what, I, what I'm what i seeing. Yeah. Uh, a part of that. And then there's people that just leave the organization mm-hmm. and they go and they live uh, you know, near, near family, uh, or supporting church. So, you know, sort of thinking through those things of not just where, but why, right. Um, you're coming back. Um, and then if you, if you don't have that, if you are moving back to a small town in mm-hmm. Iowa or Ohio or, or something that doesn't understand cross-cultural workers yeah. um, and that experience, like, do you have connections with people that do? Right. Um, um, so those those are definitely areas that would be, you know, really helpful to, to think through. I mean, there are organizations, uh, well, reentry ex- experts, we do groups. Right. Um, Everybody, uh, Asmara has a uh, grace spaces in some areas in in the states. Um, yeah. to, you know, to just be able to connect with other people. Asmara yeah. is also doing a state side um, here in Jan, end of January, mm-hmm. that I'll be doing a couple of workshops at, and you know, just connecting with other people. But that's again one of the other right. spaces that I'm looking at trying to to create is, you know, a re-entry space um, yeah, for from sure. that. Yeah, that was, um, my experience was very similar to what you talked about where we didn't really feel like, you know, I think one of the most difficult things about re-entry is you don't really feel like you have a home, you know, it's because where you've lived in your host country has been your home. And so I know for us, we were like, okay, do we move near family? Like, where should we move? It just, there didn't feel like we had a soft landing place. And so it really ended up being where my husband could get work. And so we ended up in San Francisco where I didn't know a single person. And I remember landing in this world and feeling like this alien because, you know, all around me was this, you know, wealth and, and, you know, people were spending, you know, hundreds of dollars on their pillows and their curtains. And, you know, I'm just getting back and I have like nothing. I have like, a, you know, <laughs> six suitcases and that's all I have. And, and it just felt like this, um, you know, walking into a Target or Walmart, it just was overwhelming and just this disparity between, you know, the, the, the poor and the wealthy and just feeling that so acutely, like, you know, I remember just feeling like, well, I used to want to buy clothes, you know, a pair of jeans, you know, that cost a hundred dollars. Now I know that I can buy like a month of food, you know, for my girls in Uganda. And so it was just this strange sense of displacement because I didn't feel like anyone else around me was asking those kinds of questions or going through that experience of like, this just feels wrong or it just feels like too much or materialism or something. And um, yeah. And then just not feeling like we had a church to come back to and um, not feeling like we knew other missionaries or global workers. And so that just all kind of led to the, the isolation as well, which I think is really big um, when you, when you go through reentry. So there's two more seasons. So there is that space that you're talking about that I call, we call restore, uh, which is the liminal space of like, I, you know, okay, well now we've got our things, we've got our beds, we've got our food, yeah. but now it's like, uh, you know, we sort of run into this space of that identity yeah. of, you know, well, yeah, it, 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 it's not really working. Yeah. like how I thought it was going to work. And then we can work, work on rebuilding mm-hmm. out of all of that. So that the second season can last anywhere from like two weeks to like the rest of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I, yeah. In some ways I still feel like 
you know, I'm rebuilding. Right. It took me a long time. Like what you said about the identity loss is huge because, you know, on the mission field, when you're in ministry, you feel like you have this sense of purpose and you feel like God is on your side and he's with you and, and what you're doing has such value and importance. And then you come back and maybe you have to switch jobs. Maybe you need income. You know, a lot of people, missionaries, you know, need income or to get out of debt or, and so maybe you end up having to do something that you don't love and it doesn't feel like it has purpose. And so all of a sudden it's like, well, who am I now? You know, I'm, I'm not the same person. I'm not needed. I'm not necessary. And so that loss of purpose is really devastating. And for me, that was the biggest loss was grieving. You know, I, I felt like over there, I, I was confident, you know, I knew what I was doing. I, I loved my job and then coming back and just having to, you know, find other work to support us and just feeling like I don't know who I am anymore. And so is that something that, that you went through or you see a lot in missionaries? Absolutely. I think that my, so identity and relationships are, are sort of those big losses that we have to grieve. So the second workbook is looking at sort of the, the career uh, transition piece of like, what can I bring to the world now? Yeah. Um, so we look at, um, you know, we look at personality assessments. We look at, you know, our values because our values change or our motivations change. Um, and, um, so we, so we spend some time creating a renewed, uh, purpose, a statement that sort of gives us something to, to use to move forward. Mm. Um, I think it's just, it's just different, you know, so it's like a lot of things, it's like, it's just going to be different, but it's okay. And there might be, you know, I have people that's like, they're ready to move into the next thing, but they don't even know what that is and what that looks like. Yeah. And it's like, okay, let's just step back. Let's just take a little bit of time to mm-hmm. focus on what that might look like. Um, and that will give you, you know, a better sense of being able to rebuild. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I went through that. I, I met with a life coach and, um, cause I felt so lost just like, you know, right. and I was still doing work from the States in Uganda. I was supporting my mm-hmm. nationals there to do work. And so I felt sort of torn between, the States Mm -hmm. and Uganda. And then I was also like, okay, well, what other passions do I even have in life? You know? And then that's actually how I got back into writing again was, you know, rediscovering the old passion, old, you know, hobby of mine, and then beginning into doing that. And then I got into life coaching for missionaries and, and it was in kind of finding that purpose again, like now I think that really helped like heal me and help me get to the next phase. Cause I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not just like purposeless. Like I actually can do something else in the world. And that's not the only good thing I'll ever do. You know, I have other good things, you know, I can do here. And so are, are there any tools or resources you recommend for when people, you know, return, you know, that, it, that you think would be helpful for them or were helpful for you? Yeah. Um, so Rocky reentry is a great, um, blog having that place. So what we've done with reentry experts is we've created specific work to do in each of these seasons. Mm. So within the first season, um, we do, we do have, uh, I'm, I'm actually looking at writing a book about all of this. It's great. So maybe year or so uh, to be a little bit uh more specific but so within the first uh we've, we've written a six week um awesome journal uh there's a journal and then they're just the, going through the psalms mm. you know because a lot of people's like oh i really need to be doing a bible study but i just don't have time or capacity yeah to do it so it's like okay well let's just take one psalm for a week um, so anyway, they feel like they're, they're doing something a little bit, but, you yeah. know, but not some in-depth Bible study that, you know, maybe they were doing at, at one particular time. Yeah. And then there's a journal that I don't currently have, um, but you can get all this on Amazon and it's just a journal, um, to, to be able to focus and write things out. Um, you know, we do talk a little bit about self-care. Mm-hmm. Um, we talk bit about re you know sort of like where are we in the space um and so that's a a six-week uh journal 
um, so that we use that during the, the first uh, part of the season. The second season is, um, like I mentioned, Restore. Mm -hmm. That's uh, this workbook. Nice. Um, you can buy the workbook and do it on your own. Um, this one's the, sort of the, the, the trauma one. We, we talk a lot about grief. We talk about mm -hmm. laments. We talk about that self-forgiveness. So um, good forgiving others um so it's tools it's it's set up for six weeks you don't have to do it in six weeks it's like daily work every day you have just a little bit there's there's um things to you know, mm, like love that. what where are you in your loss um place and then um the third one is is the rebuild workbook um and in this one you you yeah. get to create your renewed purpose statement and again mm -hmm. what, what do you want to to bring to the world so those yeah. are um, <laughs> different things and then like i said mentioned we have groups um that go through it together um we are trying to create a community i did start a facebook yeah. page but I'm having I think that's crucial getting because, it, you like know, you said, I think, stuff. you know, being connected to other missionaries that <laughs> are going through the same thing. And, through, I mean, and across the board, whether you're going like through trauma one, or grief, you know, like connecting with other people that are in the together, same boat as you is, coffee, is such a, a big part of the healing together. process. Um, um, and you mentioned self-care. Are there some practical, um, you know, self-care practices that you recommend for missionaries as they're returning? Yeah. Mm. Grace, give yourself. Grace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, being sort of in a in yeah. a season of receiving, receiving from the Lord. Um, yeah. I think those are. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much going on and just to, I, I think mm -hmm. meeting with a coach is great. I, I mean, I, we do that within PBT. We have coaches that we just alongside people yeah. and say, you know, how, how's it going? Sure. What does that look like? What stage do you think you're in? Um, you know, sort of having someone outside yeah. of, of that. Um, being you know, again yeah. connected, I think, with others yeah. in is, is self care. <laughs> um, you know, don't yeah. worry about getting everything right. Uh, I think that's yeah. a really hard one. Um, it was for me. It's like okay, but you know, come to it. Uh, you know, as an openness yeah. that we're. Or just in this transit. You know, the good thing about working with missionaries yes. is that we're so used to living in transition that, um, like, this is a, just a really big transition. Yeah, so whatever me, you were doing, um, like the furlough, I feel like coming back after you know, Left Uganda, that was really the first I mean, time that I actually started that time practicing self care in of, some way, and I, I did um, take it as you said as a time of, of receiving that, and just pouring into yeah, myself, and partially. So. I felt um, like I chose that, you know, because I was trying to get my body healthy again so I could carry a baby. And so that was a huge motivator for me. But but really, God just impressed upon me the sense that I needed to be in this receiving posture. And so not, you know, overcommitting myself or getting involved in ministry again right away was, was something, like you said, the grace that I gave myself. And, and just, you know, I would do things like take walks or take jogs, you know, through... Uh, the forest and start eating healthy and start taking supplements and nourishing my body again, because I hadn't really been doing that on the field. And so just little things like that helped, but it was that, that mentality of, of realizing that I had been through something really hard and I needed to, to really focus on myself for a little bit. And um, yeah, and meeting with a coach and everything like that, that was super helpful as well. Uh, do you have any encouragement for missionaries that are currently going through the reentry process? Anything that you would say to them to to encourage them in this space that they're in? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, that you're not alone. Or you don't have to do it alone. Um, there are other people that are going through those same things <laughs> um, that you are. Um, there are resources. There's a plan. <laughs> <It's not much. laughs> um, like I said, where we will, I'm, I'll yes. be doing some more for life overseas this fall. Um, yeah, there's this hope. Spring, I think. Um, and yeah. Um, upstream collective. So um, there's, th- there are going to be coming more resources. Um, so that there's, it's yeah, coming. we can find it yeah. again. I love that. Well, this has just been such a gorgeous conversation. Whole, I'm so happy to have season you. I'm so glad we have all these the amazing resources for people based available. Of renewed and, uh, Sean, if people want to connect with you or, you know, get involved in any of your reentry programs, can you tell them back. how they can do that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shauna Ingram.com has uh, a couple of our programs and it's under reentry experts currently. Maybe we'll be able to to have its own website eventually. Um, okay. But um, right now it's under, it's under um, and there's a tab for reentry experts. And it has all, I also have a, it's a, a, a free um, digital course that sort of talks yeah. about the three seasons of reentry. It's true to educate, to, to educate the, the sending organizations that we that need to be doing a better job. And also job if you have, you know, for if you work in an organization. Um, uh, so know, that's awesome, to, Shana. Well, if you want to connect with me, you can find me on my website, www.sarutahearts.com. And on there, I actually do have a free reentry mm-hmm. ebook. It's new. And it just kind of talks about just some of these ideas that we've talked about here. And that's free. Just subscribe to my yeah. newsletter and you'll receive that in your inbox. And you can also find me on Instagram at Sarita Hearts. And please subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. It's so helpful um, to me. And Shauna, it's been a pleasure, and I hope that people connect with you around the reentry experience. Well, beautiful ones, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Reentry is one of the most difficult experiences a missionary can go through. Reentry is like navigating the world underwater, everything disorienting and muted. It's like severing a limb as you reach for the phantom leg, missing all that was before. It is not feeling at home anywhere in the world, but rather feeling as though your home is spread over continents with the people you loved in each place. It is lonely and isolating, but know you don't have to do this alone. Please go to my website, saritahearts.com, to download your free ebook on reentry. And as always, please leave a review for this podcast. It helps me so much. And until next time, be well, my loves.